We care deeply for every single one of you. We, you've been in our prayers, and we're so excited about tonight's program. Just to do a couple housekeeping things before we get started with tonight's program. To start off with, we have um, a prayer line that we would absolutely love to make sure that you do have available. Um, we've got some people here that are incredible. All the broadcasters are committed to praying for you. Um, we care so deeply about where you're at and what, you, what you're needing a breakthrough in. And so the numbers, if you want to give us a call, I've got several, and that would be either for a donation, also for Vision TV, as well as a prayer line. And that would be um, the phone number 714-299-5096, excuse me, 26. The next number is 714-299-7352. And the last one is 714-299-5026. Those are available on the screen. And like I said, please, please give us a call. We understand people are experiencing different things, and we just want to make sure that um, you understand that Vision TV is committed to absolutely praying for you and, um, and your breakthrough. So we just got back, Earl and I just got back from a really amazing vacation, and we went to Paris and we visited Amsterdam. Um, our daughter lives there, and we got a chance to go to Amsterdam. And we experienced some amazing different things and museums and sites and gardens. And I, I have to say that, I mean, both Earl and I have experienced tremendous pain independently as well as um, as a couple that we've experienced difficulties. And to see that God allowed this window of opportunity for us just to simply just enjoy ourselves and be able to just have some fun and build some memories with our family it was just amazing. So we both have experienced um, illness, we both have experienced loss, we both have experienced pain in so many different ways and so I'm just so grateful to God to have that opportunity. I told Earl that my, my travel bucket is completely full, I never have to go anywhere else again and I don't know if he necessarily believed me. I think again might be six months to a year, but <laughs> that's all right. <laughs> but we just want to be real on the program on Joining Christ. We just want to be absolutely real and vulnerable and tell you, you know, and share really about our life. Um, Joining Christ to me isn't just, um, isn't just simply, you know, it's, it's fruit. Joy is fruit of the Spirit, like love and um, peace and patience and kindness, all these different things that we read in as, as a fruit of the Spirit. But joy actually comes from abiding in the vine. So an orange or a peach is beautiful when you see that, but that's produced because it was abiding in the vine. It was in the branch and the vine. And that vine is Jesus Christ. Yes. So you have to be abiding yes. in the vine, connected to him. If you can't, aren't connected to the vine of Jesus Christ, nothing of the spiritual value is really going to come out of your life. So look, yes. read John 15 and just read through those first eight verses. If you can really grasp what he's saying there, you will just, your life will be changed. So we don't just produce fruits out of pressing and pushing and striving. In fact, some people are, you, you may be able to produce joy, but is it really truly from abiding in the vine? And when he, when Earl and I and the other people that are watching tonight have joy in your life, joy being, being um, is your strength, the joy of the Lord is your strength, that is from abiding. And so when people hear our testimonies of how God's helped us to overcome different things, then they actually can taste and see. As they eat of that fruit, they can taste and see the goodness of God. They can taste and see, and that's what helps to transform lives because of Jesus. And so we have been committed individually to abide in the vine for many, many years. And that's why we sit before you and have our program called Join Christ. And I think one more quick thing is people get confused between happiness and joy. And they're two completely different things, but people think they're the same. So happiness is based on your circumstances. Happiness is based on your relationships with people, how your kids are doing, how your wife's doing, your spouse, your work, your finances, all that. 
that's happening. So it's based on your circumstances and what's going on in your life right now. So you go up and down, up and down, up and down. Joy is when all of a sudden you're going through the trials of life and you can have peace and rest and you can have joy because you're abiding in Jesus and you read through the testaments throughout the scriptures. Stephen getting stoned and it's like they can see the joy in him. Well, there's no happiness in getting stoned to death. So when you have, but you have joy, they can see that his peace, they can see his relationship with Jesus, they can see his connection to the vine. And so that actually, they believe, it could be one of the things that really stirred the Apostle Paul, who who was Saul at the time, watching that, he, that he saw Jesus in him. He saw him going through the stoning and... It just, it, I think it really transformed or prepared him so that when he had an encounter with Jesus, he was truly able to receive him as Lord. And that can only be supernatural. That can only be supernatural that he was able to do that. And the same thing with us as we've gone through different um, circumstances that we can, after abiding in the vine, you know, it's that we can have joy in the midst of it. And it's, it's an inside, it's an inside job. I just have to manage me. I just have to manage how I'm speaking, how I'm living my life, and I don't have to control and manipulate anyone around me. And that brings me joy <laughs> to be able to know that, that I can have peace and joy and love inside, starting from the inside and, and going out. So tonight's program, if I can just mention our the Let name of it. Bunch of sure. So, Father God, we just thank you for this night. We just thank you for your love. We're overwhelmed of our salvation. We're so thankful for what you did on the cross and that we have such, we have such hope knowing that we'll be in eternity in, in, your, in your presence. We don't take it for granted. We're so thankful. We're so thankful for your amazing commitment and the blood of Jesus. And we just ask, Father, that you would just be with us tonight, God, that you would just touch every person that's listening this evening. Every person would get touched and just by your spirit as it goes out tonight and encourage the body of Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So the name of our program tonight is Honor Leads to a Transformed Life. Um, there's several key things that we want to talk about tonight. We want to touch on um, um, honoring your mother and father will bring long life. It will, it's a promise that we read in um, Ephesians 6, 2, 3, 2 and 3. Um, we also want to talk about honor creates safety in relationships and how we're doing life, not only with my husband, but my family, my neighbors, people around me. It creates safety. And um, being thankful is just absolutely critical. I can't honor someone and without being thankful for that person. And the reason why honor is such, an, is such a big deal is because I really believe that longevity, you know, living well and having a long life is really vital. In um, Ephesians 6, 2, and 3, you know, um, the word says, honor your mother and father and that you will live well and you will have longevity. And that's actually a promise that we have. It's the only commandment that comes with a promise. And this is the scripture, I'm just going to touch on this briefly, but this is a scripture that I really struggled with for decades. As I was um, deep in my relationship with God, as I was seeking the word, as I was seeking God's presence, it was the one uh, verse that I really struggled with and I didn't quite understand what God's nature in this way because I have seen a lot of pain around me with mothers and fathers. And to date, everyone on the planet has a mother and a father. You might not have a cousin, you might not have a sister, you may not have um, you know, a coworker if you have your own business and you work alone, but everyone has a mother and a father. And those are the most tender, most amazing relationships that we want. Every person wants to be accepted by their parents. Every person wants to be loved and nurtured and cared for. Unfortunately, we live in a broken world and there are many parents that have fallen short. I mean, even myself as a parent, I have fallen short. And, and I think what God, is, what God did in this verse is, as he was teaching me and really revealing to me what this was about is what I learned is I think it's, it's important for me to understand that I can actually 
honor my mother and my father as I understand that they're made in God's image, whether they're deceased, whether they were abandoned me as a child, whether I was, um, you know, some people have been abused by their parents. I think there's two ways of having an inheritance from our parents or in life. Either I'm going to connect to the weakness in my parents and judge them and drag it you know, and connect to that, and then the very thing that I judge them for, I become as an adult. So I think what, what God was really showing me is either I need to, I need to forgive, I don't want to hold any unforgiveness toward my parents, because then I'm going to really attach to that, and I really want to make certain that I'm honoring to my parents, and that just means being respectful. And, and revering, you know, being reverential towards them, not towards the sin in their life, not towards the fact that they may have abandoned you or, or rejected or abused you in any way, shape, or form. I'm not talking about dismissing anyone's pain that they went through, but there's so much in forgiveness. It's such a gift to us. So when God was really showing me that, what he was teaching me is if I can get there, if I can forgive my mom and my dad for the shortcomings that they have, then I can forgive anyone. I can forgive my husband. I can forgive my family. I can forgive anyone around me because those are the most tender relationships that we do have. And I really want to encourage you to dig into that. And, it, you know, just by simply asking, Holy Spirit, give me the grace to forgive my father. Give me the grace to forgive my mother because I want to have, I want to have longevity and I want to live well. Because the opposite of that is when I, when I actually hold on to and judge the very thing that I was so hurt by, then what happens is it, it hurts me. I become bitter. I become ill. I mean, illness happens so many times because of it that we're so judgmental towards our parents but it's only his grace that we're able to forgive the next point i want to talk about would be um, honor creates safety and um, earl do you want to go ahead and read proverbs eighteen twelve? uh sure thank you and it says before what does it say before a before a downfall downfall the heart is is haughty but humility comes before honor. So the reason why I wanted to mention that and thank you for reading that, I wanted to talk about tonight is there's so much in, in honor as we are honoring other people around us. And the reason why I chose this scripture is about um, pride. And I wanted to talk about just comparisons, if I can just go ahead and read those off to you. I really was, um, these are the things that God was really highlighting to me. So pride is self-centered and humility is other-centered. Um, pride is impatient with others. Honor seeks to understand. Pride discounts people and sets up walls with little attempt for heart connection. Honor has the ability to set healthy boundaries and seek connection with others. Pride says, I'm better than that other person or group of individuals. I can't learn from them at all. And it connects to the weakness in other people. Honor is the ability to see that every person they meet is made in the image of God and wants to connect to that. Pride is unable to give credit when credit is due, including the inability to give God the glory when a breakthrough happens. Honor intentionally looks for ways to give credit to others and absolutely gives God all the glory. Pride struggles with honoring others Honor exists when even you're dishonored. Pride doesn't allow feedback about how people experience us and is frequently defensive and punishes others for their feedback. Honor is always open for feedback. Pride can't take responsibility when wrong. Honor, to, honor is willing to take ownership when wrong and ask the question, it has the ability to ask, will you forgive me? I was wrong. What are your thoughts on some of those um, about pride versus uh, humility? Well, I just want to say thank you for those. Those were really very wonderful and just helped people awesome. try to understand that. So thank you. Um, you know, I think you have to really look and say, why does God hate pride so much? And it comes back to, why do we have sin in this world? Lucifer, this, the angel who was the, the brightest, the most beautiful, 
when he wanted to be like God, he now wanted to be equal to God, and it was his pride. So now he ends up being the fallen angel. He gets cast down here. He then trips us up, and it was all centered on pride. And that's why when we now enter into pride, we just open our hearts up, open ourselves up for the enemy to just torment us. That's right. And so that's right. That that basis of why the end, why God hates pride so much because He desires a close relationship. And if you list, really look at the, what Vicky said on those comparisons, everyone that's about humility is about building a relationship. Every one of those is about pride is usually about tearing a relationship down and putting yourself first, which doesn't necessarily build the relationship up. That's but right. when you're other-centered versus self-centered, you're seeking a relationship. When you're looking to forgive others, you're seeking a relationship with them. When you're holding on to unforgiveness, you're now pulling apart. You're now pulling away from a relationship with someone. You're being bitter and holding on to bitterness and being offended with them. It's now getting you so you're further apart from that person. And that's not what God wants. God doesn't care about all the material things of this world. What he values is people and relationships. Absolutely. And so when he, when we're saying long life, you could be 95 years old and be a miserable wreck. Mm -hmm. It's not about the number of years. It's, it's about living a long life, but a blessed life, a life that, that has peace and joy has connection to the vine yeah. which then reaches out to other people and has that connection so that you now can be a vessel that God uses to touch other people as he moves through you to reach others and then that is now humbleness because if you look at Jesus who's our example of everything he always came with humility and it was never self-centeredness it was never through pride it was never just about him it was about him doing his father's will so that he could build the kingdom so that he could do what his father knew was the best thing Amen. so they could build relationships and get us closer with the father so we'll have eternal life and live in live in heaven that is so awesome thank you so much so um, you know if there's a person that's watching tonight and they're saying to themselves you know how do i get there you know how do i do this you know my wife just left or my my i haven't talked to my son in three years or you know i just lost my job it's like how do i how do i honor how do i how, how am i able to do this how can i walk it out one step at a time because if, it's like if you're trying to eat an elephant and you look at the whole thing, it's impossible and it'll walk away. But you know what? One bite at a time Amen. and eventually you get there. You eventually eat the whole thing. You eventually get there. And the same thing with your relationships. It might take years to build that relationship, but as you step forward, as you reach out, as you come in humility, as you seek that, and you're not going to be offended and you're going to forgive, and you're going to come to seek after their heart, to have a connection with their heart, you eventually will win. Because a lot of times, if you had a tough relationship in the past with them, they're not going to believe that you really mm -hmm. changed, and that's what you seek. Mm -hmm. So they're actually going to make it tougher a lot of times. Mm -hmm. And because they've been hurt, they don't believe it's real, so they're going to test you, and they're going to find out, oh, Okay, you're not going to be offended. How about this? That's good. You know? Oh, you really want? How about this? And they're going to come at you with a lot of things. But as you just continue to walk in humility, walk in forgiveness, walk in not being offended, walk in the ways of Jesus Amen. and seek your relationship with your family members, all those around you, they will eventually see that you're serious in doing that, and that will win their hearts over in a long period of time and you're going to see a lot of transformation not just in you because you will be transformed through that process so but good others will be transformed through watching you go through that process and seeing you be real and that's why we really do believe that honor leads to a transformed life and so the last point i want to bring up is thankfulness i can't honor someone without being thankful for them you know my parents the same my dad's passed away my mom's 
um, living. She's um, a believer and really strong in the Lord, but wasn't always. And so I have made the decision to be so thankful for the amazing amazing qualities in the person that my mom is today. I'm, I'm so grateful for that. And the verse I want to bring up is First um, Timothy, and that's chapter 2, verse 1 and 2. And it reads, I urge them, first of all, that requests, prayers, intercession, and thanksgiving be made for everyone. Again, that word is everyone. For kings and all those in authority, that we may live peaceful and quiet lives in all godliness and holiness. This is good and pleases God our Savior, who wants all men to be saved and to come into the knowledge of the truth. So it's so important for me to be thankful. So when I'm having a relationship with somebody that may be a struggle or, or maybe we're not communicating really well, I have to literally tell or just focus on what I am thankful for. I know if I, if I have a memory that comes back that's painful, I have to make that decision. I'm so thankful for what I learned. I'm so thankful for um, that person and, and the amazing things that did happen. I mean, we can't control the world around us. I don't even want to. Like I said earlier when we started tonight, you know, I'm only over this, my part, and how I speak and the actions I take. I can't control other people. But what amazing freedom and joy that brings me knowing that um, I don't have to control other people. Well, I mean, I think, you know, if you go to Philippians 4, 6, and 7, the theme of thankfulness is mm -hmm. one of the keys. That's right. And Paul wrote about that many different times. It's not just one isolated spot. When you're thankful, I mean, Paul was thankful for everything that he got. And when he was he was thankful, he was saved. He was thankful that he was transformed. He was thankful. And that theme will go throughout so many of his writings. And I was going to say, I wanted to kind of tie one thing back here before we before we end the program is, you know, this verse of Ephesians 6, 2, and 3, it's written by Paul, the Apostle mm -hmm. Paul, but he's pulling it out of Exodus 20. That's right. So the Ten Commandments, and that's the Fifth Commandment. And if you look at the Ten Commandments, so many times people look at it very legalistic in the law, because it was the law. But the law was written to show us that we needed a savior, that we needed someone that, that on our own we can never, you know, meet the law one hundred percent. Amen. That's right. But the law is still good. It doesn't mean you throw the law out because we can't achieve achieve it. We still want to try to be the best we can, but not be legalistic mm -hmm. about it. Mm -hmm. And if you look, the first four verses. Well, I should say the first four commandments are all about trying to get your relationship right with God. So God yes. is writing the Ten Commandments. You understand God's heart here. It is all about relationships because the first four is about do these so that your relationship with me, in other words, God, is going to be good. And do these next six, which are all about your relationships with other people. So if you get the first four right, you get your relationship with God right, that's critical. Amen. He didn't, didn't end with that. He started with that because that's the critical part. you got to get your relationship right with God first. That's right. Then you can get your relationships right with other people. I totally and, agree. And if you understand that order, understand and follow that, your life is going to be so much better. Amen. I totally agree. I mean, with God, it's like, I can't really love Earl as my husband without having this relationship so solid between the Lord and myself and allowing perfect love to come and fill me. Perfect love that, that drives out punishment because fear has punishment and torment. And I think even that verse, when I say it, you know, I think of when when perfect love isn't, when I'm not open for perfect love to come in, then I do know I'm full of punishment. I want to punish myself, and I want to punish those around me. And, and I'm so thankful to have perfect love to come in. And so um, I just feel like some people out tonight are listening and are thinking, you know, how do I do this? How do I maneuver? And it's by His grace. This is like Earl said, it's taking one step at a time. And we just want to encourage you. We're being transformed by God each and every day. 
He's changing us each and every day. But what we do know is we always want to be willing to give it to you and share it with you that are listening. And so do you want to finish us up in prayer tonight? Yeah, and I just feel like, you know what, to tell to just for everyone out there, you're never going to be perfect. You are never going to be perfect. No one on this earth is ever going to be perfect. But you know what? We want to be molded and shaped into yes. the image of Christ. So, Heavenly Father, we thank you. Jesus, we just thank yes, you. Sir. Holy Spirit, we just thank you. And just touch the people out there tonight. Just yes. touch them. Touch their hearts. Show them the people they need to forgive. Show them what they need to do to bring honor into their life. Show them what they need to change to be able to build relationships, to be able to let go of offenses, and to show them the people they need to talk to, they need to work things through, they need to let go of the offenses, and just Holy Spirit, give them those people, show them what they need to do, give them some dreams, give them visions yes. of, of what it is, yes. how, they need to, how they need to be changed, yes. because they're changed, they're going to help be changing people around them, but their focus is to change themselves. So just move in their hearts, move in their minds, and show, give them hope to be able to know they can change. Yes. Thank you, thank you, thank you, yes. thank you, thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. So we love you. We look forward to our next program, and we just bless you. We continue to pray for you. Blessings. Thanks for joining. Joy in Christ.